Holy smokes, it's bright in here. Jeezy crazy. Well, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing. I'm closing the blinds now so we can have maybe a little bit more, uh, whatever thing here. Let's, uh, today <laughs> we're going to be talking about pigment allergies, specifically red reaction due to red pigments being in your body. Anyways, let's go. All right, now that that's over with, red reaction. Let's see if we can do this entirely with a red pen. I got a better red pen over here. Um, this is something that has been discussed a lot, and I'm actually, I mean, to be honest, in the past couple of years, I haven't seen as many red reactions as I had before, and uh, I don't know why that is. I mean, we can make some assumptions about like the quality of the pigments that are out there, or maybe there's just sourcing things that have changed, or maybe it's just the actual pigments themselves or populations because of pandemics, I don't know. But it still happens, and when it happens, it can be severe. So, so we're gonna start with this one versus the other pigments. Um, and let's get into it. What is a red reaction? Red reaction, sometimes people call it a pigment allergy. Uh, allergy or a sensitivity. Um, and what happens is we, we deposit the pigment in the body, the body starts to overreact and it starts to attack it, right? And it wants to get rid of it. And the red reactions out of uh, my 22 years of doing this have always been the most severe. And when they are severe, they are really, really severe and they require a ton of intervention. So what we're gonna do today is talk to you about how to identify if you're having a red reaction, if you're a client or a tattooer who's just done a tattoo with red ink, uh, as well as what some of the interventions may be and how to take care of it if needs be. Okay, so number one, the identification. With red reactions, what you're gonna see is, well, let's get into this, we'll just do this. Hyperkeratosis. What does this mean? <laughs> this means that the skin's gonna get thicker, right? Thicker uh, stratum corneum, which is the outer layer of the epidermis, right? So what's gonna happen is you're gonna see the skin and it's going to lift up. Now. The level and severity of this can, can differ from person to person. Sometimes it can be extremely easy to spot. Sometimes it's going to be textural. Sometimes the texture is just going to be, you'll have like little grooves or something. You can just feel like there's thicker patches of skin where that red pigment is. Um, sometimes they can have margins where maybe like the pigment is being set in one point, it kind of swells out past it. And other times, I mean, it can literally just this is one of the scary ones, the skin will like almost square off directly around where the red is and raise quite a bit. Um, that's, that's number one. If you see it on the red, and this, is, this can happen directly after the tattoo has been done leading up to the first two weeks, or it can happen any time moving forward after you have a tattoo with red pigment. Um, so this is not just like, if you see this in the first three weeks, no, no, no. This can happen at any point in time. There are some things that may cause it, and well, we're not getting into those right now. Um, yeah, so if you see the skin raise and it feels thicker, you run your hands over it, it's, uh, it's, just, it's not as mobile, I guess, or flexible as the tissues around it, or it's probably gonna be your first step at identifying that red reaction, right? Number two is gonna be textural changes, like we said. Textural changes. And this is gonna be like, where you actually look at the top of the skin, right? And if we take a cross section of it, normal skin will feel whatever, right? But we've got raised and then there's these grooves and lines and it just feels almost like a football, right? Where that red pigment is, you're pretty, you can be pretty sure that there's gonna be something going on with the body, right? There's that when your tattoo is done and if it's done correctly, past any amount of scarring that may be done due to poor technique, it should feel, this, this tattoo should feel smooth. There should, there should be no change topographically in the skin after it's done. So when you see textural changes, um, then there's something going on and the body is reacting to something that you've imparted into it, right? Um, next one we'll say is pain. Uh, if around on the tattoo, whatever, if, if it hurts, and this is hurts like all of the time, right? It's just constantly aching. It feels almost like it's sore, like it's been punched or hit with a hammer. Uh, it's, that means that there's something going on. Your body is actively reacting to those things uh, that you put into it in a, in, a, in a way that's probably not right. <laughs> so you need to watch out for that. This is number four is itching. 
Itching is a pretty good sign that there's something going on. It's just like your body having, you know, a sensitivity or two or a reaction to it. Like some people get bit by mosquitoes, uh, they don't itch. Or people like me, you get huge raised welts. Your body just doesn't like it. So, yeah, that happens as well. <laughs> Next one is going to be uh, redness uh, or radiating, aiding uh, color. So around the edges and the perimeter, uh, even past the simple margins, like we go to that skin cross section again, where the tattoo is, if it is red and itchy and swollen and sore around the margins of that stuff, you know that there's something going on. It almost will look like it's an infection, but it is not. So those are the five things you're gonna be looking for with this. Now, what happens if you have a sensitivity to red ink. Man, that stuff's hard to come off. Um, the first thing we have to do is, one, we gotta call a dermatologist, right? Uh, and set up an appointment. Now in the interim, while you're waiting for this appointment to happen, talk to your GP and make sure that your GP gives you an okay to uh, use a topical cream, right? On, on top of this tattoo, which is gonna help suppress the immune response that you have. Um, and it's hydrocortisone, that's uh, 0.1% USP. Um, this is OTC, right? So over the counter, you can get this stuff at any type of major, uh, I don't know, pharmacy, chemist, wherever you are in the world. Um, and what you'll do is just start applying this, you know, once, twice a day to try and just mitigate the body's over response to the pigment that's been installed there. Now, you have to make sure that you talk to your doctor, right? GP first. Uh, because if you are on any other type of medications, if you have certain chronic illnesses, conditions, if you have even a surgery coming up, you're going to get your tooth pulled, you have high blood pressure, something like that. Uh, adding uh, any type of steroids or stero steroidal creams to your regimen can cause issues. So make sure that you talk to somebody before you go out and self-medicate. I am not a physician. I am a tattoo artist. So make sure that you talk to your doctors first. Now, once you talk to your dermatologist and maybe you started this uh, routine with the hydrocortisone cream, the dermatologist is going to take one of two routes when they go to try and fix this, right? The first one is going to be, um, they're just going to continue this, right? Up dosage of the hydrocortisone, right? Cream, uh, 0.01%, 0 0.1, Oop, there we go. Um, They'll probably just do that, give you an injection, uh, wrap it up. They're going to tell you to keep it out of the sun because actually red pigments can cause uh, sensitivities to light, which is kind of crazy. Anytime that like, light will hit the tattoo, sometimes it'll bubble up, it'll raise, it'll become really itchy, painful. And when you get it out of the sun and there isn't any more like environmental trauma that's exposed to it, it starts to chill out and it goes away, which means that you do have a very good sensitivity, but you're not exhibiting a full allergy, at least systemically, continuously, but only uncertain environmental factors happen, which is still really bad. Um, the other thing the dermatologist may do is cut it off. Um, and this is crazy. They, they use a, what's that, dermatome? It's this fancy knife, it, it's like, it's crazy. Anyways, they do, it's like a deli meat cutter, and they just slice the tattoo. And they keep going deeper and deeper and deeper until they've removed enough of that pigment uh, layer inside the skin. They start to see fresh, healthy skin underneath. That's heavy. <laughs> you do stuff like this, the red pigment it may still have migrated somewhere else in the body, right? Um, so even though they may cut it off, it may cause um, better... I don't know, it may just feel better, it may alleviate the symptoms, that's what we're looking for. Um, but there still may be possible systemic reactions to the pigments as well uh, that are gonna be lifelong. And that depends on if the red pigment has migrated to your lymph nodes. And if it has, and you have that sensitivity, this red reaction be can influence additional things that happen in the future. There's been uh, reports of people who've had a severe red reaction, and they've had amputations, which is kind of crazy. And I don't know if it's the pigment or something else, but I mean, it's kind of weird that that's happened. Or other people who've had surgeries after having a red reaction and the wound sites that they had uh, created for the surgery 
took forever to heal, sometimes years. So there is something very serious about these things uh, when they get implanted into the body, right? Um, now, normally when we start seeing the first thing is that hyperkeratosis, that's normally caused by a few things, right? Like there's vitamin deficiencies or there's even poisoning, right? Um, and if you go through the JRC reports, which maybe I'll put a link in the um, description on this if I remember, um, the red pigments that have been produced by certain companies out there have been found to have higher concentrations of arsenic in them. Um, and that may cause this issue, right? If you get a tattoo that is going really deep and that, that pigment ends up getting pushed really far to the body and it gets carried away by the lymph nodes, uh, the lymph, the, into the lymph nodes and, and then it sits there and your body is constantly being triggered by one of these poisons, as it is, that may just cause a greater systemic effect, right? So it's always good to try and do something to protect against this, right? Which, number one, we're gonna do a patch test. Uh, and I've got a video on that here, uh, which you can check out how to do a patch test correctly. Um, now this, this patch test doesn't guarantee that a person is not gonna have a red reaction. It just gives you a better chance of understanding what may occur at that point in time. Now, you can have people who've had a tattoo with red ink in it that's you know, 10, 15, 20 years old, and they will get a new tattoo with red in it and they'll have a reaction. And not just with the new tattoo, but with the old one that's been there forever as well. So doing a patch test may not be a good way of, you know, uh, finding out if this person is gonna have a reaction or not, but at least you're taking those extra steps to try and ensure that, you know, at that point in time when you're doing this, the person may not have a reaction. If, if you do the prick test and they go home and there's some type of big reaction, you know right off the hop not to use that color, right? Um, <clears throat> when you do your patch tests, or even when you do your tattoo and you're using the red pigments, there's a few things that you wanna do and make sure that you hand your client so at any point in time moving forward that they can make sure that they have uh, the information if they need to, to, to talk to a dermatologist, right? You wanna have the lot, the date, and the color index numbers uh, set out so that you know what is causing these reactions, right? Um, the lot and date is very specific because sometimes there can be, you know, recalls on, on products, which right now there's no real system in the United States, uh, which I think there might be some places though, but um, where there's been something wrong, like there's been some bacteria or something else that's an, an unwanted ingredient or too much of something that's ended up in a bottle and they'll have a voluntary recall. Uh, so it, you'll be able to tell by the, the lot number and the date of when that manufacturer product was if it falls into that stuff, right? So if something does happen and it happens later down the line, they can identify that maybe that was the culprit. The other one, the color index number is just because there is a specific pigment that's being used. If that color index does throw off some type of red reaction in a specific person, which another red may not, you don't know. It, being able to give these three things to a dermatologist after a tattoo has been done can really help identify not only what the potential causes may be, but also start keeping track and record of what did occur due to these products being used. That's it. Let us know what you think. You can leave comments. If I missed anything, just put it down there. I'll do what I can to answer it. I'm doing this off the dome, like we do. Uh, like, subscribe, buy a hat. I don't know. <laughs> That's it. I'm gonna do one more video today and put it out for you because my memory card broke. I pulled it out of the camera and just blew up. So I went out and got a new one and we're doing this for the second time. Anyways, I don't want to tell you that. Hope you guys have a good day. I'll talk to you again soon. This is Ryan from Better Tattoo and signing off.